Last time we talked about basics of Carnot maps. We understand the fundamentals of a Carnot map and how to use it to generate a minimized digital logic function. But there are some advanced features of Carnot maps that really deserve some extra attention. So that's why we're spending a second day on Carnot maps. It also gives you another day of practice on, on doing the basic uh, filling the Carnot map, grouping the Carnot map, and then writing the equation. So that's, that's a, another reason for having a second lesson on Carnot maps. But there really are some very important things that, that I think that it's worth spending some extra time to talk about. The first of those, and probably the most important, is this idea of don't care entries. Now, we're accustomed with truth tables and therefore with Carnot maps that every single cell either contains a zero or a one. And it doesn't, it doesn't seem to make sense that a digital logic device would have an entry where they don't really care what the output looks like. But it turns out that there are some circumstances like that. A good example would be if, if, if there is absolutely no possible way that an input combination could possibly occur, then in that case, uh, you would not really care what the output is going to look like. You know, it, it, for example, um, you, I might have the concern, what, what would happen if I were to run 100 miles per hour? That is never going to happen, so I don't need to worry about that. There are certain certain combinations of events that will simply never happen. And it turns out that if you know that an event can never happen, then you can substantially simplify your work by putting that as a don't care entry. We're going to represent a don't care entry with the letter capital X. Now, there are other notations that are sometimes used. The Greek letter phi is popular or an asterisk is popular. But from what I can see, the capital X is, is the most common. So that's what we're going to use in our notation as well. Now, the thing to know about a don't, a, a don't care entry is that when you're doing the grouping, a don't care can be treated as either a zero or a one. It's a wild card. It's a joker. And it can be used to match up with whatever other cells are around it in the way that gives you the best possible result. And I think the best way to understand that is to see an example. Here we have a don't care entry in the next to the last cell, cell number six. And you can see here that I've, I've drawn the K-map twice. Once I've drawn it uh, in, in figure B and once in figure C. In figure B, we are, we are treating the X as though it is a zero. And in figure C, we're treating the X as though it's a one. Now, clearly, treating it as a one is going to allow us to have fewer groups and larger groups. Over here, we have to have three groups. Two of them are, are only two cells. One of them is only one cell. Over here, we need only two groups, and one of them gets to be four cells, and the other one gets to be two cells. If you just look at the digital logic uh, function that comes out of it, the Boolean equation, you can see if we have to treat that cell as though it's a zero, we get a big, long, kind of nasty equation. If we get to treat it as though it's a one, we get a much more compact, much simpler equation. So this really illustrates that, that if we can treat that don't care as a one, then we're going to be much happier. We'll end up with a much simpler equation. And since it is never possible for the inputs to ever read one, one, zero, for reasons that are beyond our understanding at this point, that is the case, uh, we know that if those inputs can never be one, one, zero, then it doesn't matter. We can, we can literally make it be anything that we want it to be. Let's look at another quick example here. Uh, this time I've given one, uh, two, three don't care entries. And so you can see that when I fill in the, the truth, the, the Carnot map over here from the truth table, I've put in all the cells that are ones, I've put in all the cells that are zeros, and I've put in all the cells that are don't cares. Now, I believe that this is the optimal grouping in which we, we treat the cell number one as a one, but we treat cells 13 and 15 as zeros. What this allows us to do is to cover every cell that is a solid one and do not cover any of the cells that are zero. Now, of course, could we treat the 13 and 15 as though they're ones? Yes, but it would require more, more logic. It would require a more complex solution. Could we treat cell number one as though it's a zero? Yes, we could, but again, it would take more complex logic because we'd have more groups and or smaller groups. And our goal is always to get the fewest and the largest possible groups. So that's really all that there is to, to Carnot maps with don't care entries. If you have a don't care entry in, in the truth table, transfer it to the Carnot map, and then you get to choose. It's a wild card. It can be treated as a zero or a one. And I think with that, you're ready to, to tackle the example problem, and then come back and we'll talk about min term expressions.